today's episode we will wrap up the series by finally adding the hotkey bar for our items. First I just wanted to let you know that I added a new texture to our project called hotkey slot. Download link will of course be in the description. And now let's get started. We will go to our widgets folder, right click and create a new widget blueprint called hotkey slot. Double click. We will change it to desired on screen here, delete the canvas panel and start with a new size box. Here we will check width and height of right and set it to 64 by 64 pixel or whatever you want to use. Then let's add a border to it. Call that our slot BG for background and check the is variable. Then we will clear the padding and under brush select the hotkey slot. Also we will darken it a bit by modifying the brush color here. If you want to get the exact same result that I have, you can type in 161717FF for the hex linear code and hit OK. Then let's add an overlay to our border and on top of that we will start with an image that will be called our icon. Set that to horizontally and vertically fill with a padding of 5 pixel maybe. Also its visibility should be set to hidden by default. Then we will add a text to the overlay which will be the amount text. Here again check the is variable. We will align it to the right bottom with a padding of 5 from the bottom or maybe 2 from the bottom and 5 to the right. Then decrease the font size to 12 maybe and let's make the shadow color opaque. Then the justification will be set to align text right and you can set the default text to something like x99. Here again set the default visibility to hidden. Compile, save and let's go to the graph. Here we will need some new variables. First a boolean called empty. So is there anything on our slot or not? Then we will need the assigned inventory index, which will be an integer. The next one will be a reference to our inventory. That will be a BP inventory reference. Then we will also need a default tint which will be a linear color and a drag over tint also a linear color. Finally we will add another boolean called dragged over question mark. Make that a boolean. Then let's hit compile and set the empty to true by default. We can go to the designer to our slot right click on the brush color copy that and paste it for our default tint. Then let's go to our drag over tint and here I would suggest to use the hex linear code FF7A00FF so a really bright orange yellow color and we can compile save once more and right click add custom event called update so first off we will drag in our empty boolean and branch for that. If our slot is empty we will get the icon, get the amount text and set visibility for both of them to hidden. After we did that set drag over to false, drag in the slot bg and set color set brush color to our default tint. However, if our slot is not empty, we will drag in the inventory, get item info at index, index will be the inventory index, then we will set our empty to the empty slot boolean, of our get item info node, and after that add another branch, so if now our slot is empty, 
we will go to our set visibility to hidden node. But if not, drag in the amount text, set text, connect that here. And for the in text, we will search for format text. And the format will be x, and then in curly brackets, amount. Finally, we will connect the amount from the get item info node. Then drag in the icon, set brush from texture, break the item info, connect the icon, and connect it to the execution. Finally, we can copy over the amount and icon, and set the visibility, this time to visible. Then we also need to override some functions here. So first one will be on drag over. On drag over we will cast the operation to item drag. Then we will get our dragged over boolean branch for it. If our dragged over is already true we won't do anything but if it's false we will set it to true and then drag in the slot bg, set brush color and this time we will set it to our dragged over tint. After that return with true, copy over the return node for the true path, finally copy it over for the cast failed and this time uncheck the return value. Next function that we will override is on mouse button down. So here of the mouse event, search for mouse button down and we will select the right mouse button. Then we will connect the return value with an end node and drag in the empty, search for not. So when a slot is not empty already and we hit the right mouse button, we will clear our slot. So let's add a branch. If it's true, we will set empty to true and directly afterwards call update. Then we will return and for the return value search for handled. Also connect that to the false path. Then we need to override on drop. So when we drop an item onto a hotkey slot we will assign it to the hotkey. First off cast the operation to item drag again. Off of the item drag, get the slot. Off of the slot, get the index, slot index, and the item info. Then break the item info, expand it, and off of our can be used boolean, add a branch. So we won't assign items to hotkeys that cannot be used, like quest items, for example. If it's false, just return with false. But if it's true, so when we can use that item, let's set our inventory index to the slot index, set empty to false, then call update, and finally set dragged over to false, drag in the slot, and set brush color to our default tint. After that we will add another return node, this time with success or true. And off of the cast failed, add another return node with false. Then compile save again. And there is one function left that we have to override which is on drag leave. Here again we need to cast it to item drag then drag in the dragged over, add a branch, connect that to the success part of the cast. And only if dragged over is true, we will set it to false. And drag in the slot BT, set brush color to our default tint. 
Alright, that's everything for a hotkey slot. Compile, save, close it. Then right click anywhere, create a new widget blueprint, which will be the hotkey. Double click. Again, desired on screen, kill the canvas panel. Here we will start with the border with no padding. For the brush color I chose some kind of bluish tone. The hex linear code for that will be 01121499. But feel free to use any other color. On top of that border we will add a vertical box. And on top of that vertical box, start with the text. That text will be called our key text. And make that a variable. Give that a padding of 10, 0, which means just 10 to the left and 10 to the right. Then for the default text, you could type in something like in square brackets, one set the justification to align text center and that's everything we have to do here then search for a hotkey slot and drag that on top of our vertical box make sure it's set to horizontally align center and vertically align bottom then here we will give it some padding as well give that a padding of 10 to the left 10 to the top 10 to the right and 0 to the bottom then head over to the graph Add some variables here. So first one will be the assigned key for this short key. Variable type will be key, not the key event, just key. Make that editable and exposed on spawn. And the last one will be a reference to the inventory, which will be a BP inventory reference. Again, editable and exposed on spawn. Then on event construct we will drag in the hotkey slot and set its inventory reference to our inventory reference. So just to pass through that data. And after that drag in the key text, set text. For the in text again we will use a format. That format will be in square brackets and then in curly brackets a uh, key name and for the key name we will drag in the key and get display name connect that to the key name finally there is one thing that is completely optional and that is to go to your override functions override on drop and just return with true so that way when we drop things onto a hotkey bar but not on the slots they won't be removed from the inventory that's actually the same thing that we did for our inventory widget. So compile save and we can close it now. Then we also have to create a hotkey bar and that we can do directly in our main widget. So double click to open that up. A hotkey bar will just be a horizontal box. Add that here. Call that hotkey bar. Make that a variable. Anchor it to the lower left corner. Give it an alignment of 0.5 in X, 1 in Y. Check size to content. C order will be 1. The position will be 0 in Y and 444 in X. Just so it appears in the middle of our corner and the equipment window. You can also move that over a bit, maybe 500. Yeah, 500 should work. All right. That's that. Then uh, we will have to go to our graph. Here we will add some variables. First a boolean called show hotkeys, question mark, editable and exposed on spawn. And then if we show hotkeys we want to have an array of all the keys. So just call that hotkeys, make that an array and of the type key. Also editable and exposed on spawn. And finally, we will need one more variable, and that is the hotkey widgets. That will also be an array, but this time of hotkey widgets. And that should not be editable or exposed on spawn. Compile, save, 
and we will add one function called generate hotkeys. What that will do is drag in a hotkey widget, clear the array, then drag in a vertical box called hotkey bar, clear that as well. After that, drag in our hotkeys and launch it for each loop. And for every hotkey, we will create a widget of the type hotkey. The key comes from our array element, and the inventory reference will be our inventory reference. Connect that. Then drag in our hotkey widgets array and add to it the return value here. Finally, drag in the hotkey bar and add child to horizontal box and then connect the return value from our create hotkey widget. When our loop is completed, we can return. Then let's go back to our event graph and after we did everything here we will drag in show hotkeys branch. So if we want to show the hotkeys we will need to generate them. If not we can drag in the hotkey bar and remove it from parent since we don't need it then. Alright that's everything we had to do in our main widget. Compile, save, you can close it. Now we need to go to our inventory and the first thing is on event begin play we create our main widget and we will need to create variables for show hotkeys and the hotkeys so promote show hotkeys to a variable called show hotkeys question mark also make that editable and expose on spawn here and finally drag off of the hotkeys, promote that to a variable called hotkeys and make that editable and expose and spawn as well. Then we will just need some functions to update our hotkeys and to actually use them. First one will be update hotkey for index. It will have one input which will be the index. Then first off we will drag in our show hotkeys, add a branch and only if it's true we will get the index. Promote that to a local variable called local index. False you can directly return. After we promote the local index we will drag in our main widget, get the hotkey widgets and again do it for each loop then off of the array element get the slot the hotkey slot and get empty also get the inventory index now we will check that we are not empty and that our inventory index equals the local index connect that to the end off of the end add a branch, connect that to the loop body and if it's true drag off of the hotkey slot and call update. After our loop is completed return. Then let's add another function that we will call handle hotkey press. It will have an input that is the key that was pressed so press key Again, we will drag in show hotkeys, add a branch, if it's false, return, connect that to the execution here. Now if we show our hotkeys, let's promote the pressed key to a local variable called local key. And then we will again drag in the main widget, get the hotkey widgets. This time launch it for each loop with break. When it's completed return. Then here get the slot again. 
get the inventory index and of the array element get the key then get empty of a hotkey slot we will check that our key equals the local key and that our hotkey slot is not empty so add a node, connect that to the condition and add a branch if a slot is not empty and it has the assigned key we will call use item at index at the inventory index of our slot and after we did that we will break out of the loop compile save and fortunately there is only one function left that we have to do which is called handle swap for hotkeys it will have two inputs index 1 and index 2 both of them will be integers same as we did before check whether we actually show the hotkeys if not return but if so promote index 1 to a local variable called local 1 and promote index 2 to a local variable called local 2 connect them to the true path drag in the main widget get the hotkey widgets again for each loop without break then we will get the hotkey slot get empty add a branch and only if we are not empty we will get the inventory index and check whether it equals local one add a branch connect that to the false path of the last branch if that is true drag off of the hotkey slot set inventory index to local 2 but if it doesn't equal local 1 we will check whether it equals local 2 at a branch connect that to the force of the branch before and if that's true we will set inventory index to local 1 this time then add a return node for uh, for each loop compile save then go to the event graph and in our update slot at index event we will call update hotkey for index afterwards with the incoming index and then we have to go to our swap slots function and right here after we set local slot 2 our structure here we will call handle swap for hotkeys and drag in our local index 1 for index 1 and local index 2 for index 2 alright compile save and the last things we'll have to add in our top down character let's open it up and first off on event begin play when we spawn our inventory we will check show hotkeys and for the hotkeys you can type in make array drag that over a bit and now you can define whatever keys you want so I would just add four the first one will be the keys one two and three and the last one just to show that you can also do that with other keys will be spacebar then you can right click somewhere where you have your key events and search for event any key so when we press any key we will get the inventory reference and call handle hotkey press connect the press key compile save one thing that I forgot was to go to our hotkey slot in our on drop event here when we check whether it can be used and it returns false we have to go to the drag over to false and set brush color then we can delete the return node and let's hit playtest now as you can see we have hotkeys for 1, 2, 3 and spacebar 
Let's pick up our wood, the hero swords, our map, and the health potion and the ring. So when we drag our ring to the spacebar, nothing will happen. If, however, if we add an item to it that can be used, like a health potion, I can drop that on here, see it updating. If I right click, our slot will be cleared. Now I hit spacebar, nothing happens. But if I add it, for example, to 2, or I can also add it to multiple hotkeys, so 2 and 3. And now I can hit either 2, and you can see it updating everywhere, or I can hit 3, and it will update everywhere, give us some health as well. If I throw away all of the health potion, you can see that our slots are now cleared as well. Or I can drag a hero slot onto a slot and then change its position in the inventory, but it will still remain in the hotkey bar. Now I can hit 3 and we equipped our weapon. Alright, that was everything we had to do for this little inventory system series. I hope that you liked it and actually learned something. However, that's definitely not the end of my YouTube channel because I really enjoyed doing it and I will go on like that. So definitely stay tuned for the next video in which I will present you the options for the topic of our next series and there will also be a download link for the full inventory system project that you can download there for free. Alright, see you in the next video.